Hey everyone, in case you missed it, my name's Ryan. Here today I'm going to talk to you about a great two arts lesson plan that me and some of my pre-service teacher cohorts have put together for you. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to learn some things about our community, the environment, and at the end we'll end up with a really cool piece of art as well. Um, so like I said, I didn't do this by myself, so I'm going to take a second, introduce my friends here that helped me create this lesson. Um, so without further ado, here they are. Claire Grinstead, Shelley Hansen, and Jacob McMillan. So the curriculum objectives in this lesson that we're looking at today are to create two and three dimensional works of art that express feelings and ideas inspired by activities in their community or observations of nature. There's also using elements of art and design and artworks to communicate ideas, messages, and understandings. And finally, we're looking at using a variety of materials, tools, techniques to respond to the particular design challenge. So without wasting any time, let's get into it. Here's what you're going to need. So we're going to need lots of paint brushes, lots of paint brushes. Maybe some sponges. Scissors, safety scissors are good to have on hand. Gotta cut out those stencils. We want some paints. Generally signs are two colors, but hey, let's get creative. Give them lots of options. We want some painter's tape. Be good, could help um, mask off kind of different parts of their stencil. And of course we need our design. So for this lesson, they'll be creating their own design. Go ahead, get them to cut it out. So this here is the difference between what your negative and your positive stencil is going to look like. So using negative and positive space. So the one on the bottom here is uh, an example of negative where you're filling in the space that you cut out. And then the cutout is the positive where you'd be using it to protect the surface that you're painting over. Finally, we need what it is exactly that we're painting on. I used canvas, but for the class you could use um, paper, poster board whatever you want to use. So we did decide that um, acrylic paint is going to be the best way to go, but from here I'm just going to let this roll and uh, give you something to look at while I explain what's going on. Um, so to engage children in this uh, activity, we wanted to start with a discussion about our community, how we find our way around, how we know whose turn it is at intersections, an open discussion for those types of signs they have seen. In particular ones maybe connected to the environment where you know there's deer or moose crossing or maybe in PEI you see the odd like duck crossing sign. Um, and then we would sort of introduce pictures of signs that they would have seen. So like a common one might be like a stop sign or your yield sign and just kind of give them an idea of the, uh, the background behind signs and the symbolize or the symbolism that is uh, portrayed in each street sign. Um, after that, so we will be introducing the technique of stenciling. So, um, stenciling in using reverse stenciling, the negative and positive space, understanding the concept of layering. Um, so, some of the other vocabulary we'll need to know is background, foreground, middle ground, um, graphic design, and symbolism. Um, so all these words, when we decided uh, as a group, we'd put them up on the word wall so that you know kids could kind of keep these um, front of mind and be able to use them um, as they plan out their their activity or their artwork. Um, so at the end of this, uh, students will present their sign design to the rest of the class. The other students will then begin to guess the context and meaning behind the student's sign and understand the messages that this um, student is attempting to display. So after this guessing period, students will identify the correct answers provided by students and explain the meaning behind why they chose to include specific symbols and images through the use of stencils. Students will also use this reflection time to refresh their memory of the new vocabulary learned during this lesson when they're added to the word wall. Students will have the definition and idea of the concepts explained once again to ensure they have a firm understanding of the concepts. So in order to evaluate this particular activity, um, we would put all the, uh, the finished products up on the wall and give the opportunity to view their peers' work. Classroom discussion can, can help students highlight techniques used in colors and subject matter selected by their peers. Um, we can play an I spy like session can help students better understand and observe specific elements and principles. Ultimately here, the, the process and meaning is more important than the final product. So the written responses provided by the students will help provide further insight into the connections and personal meaning in the work and their specific choices. Um, so the, the big thing here is, you know, making 
making good decisions and planning out how your activity is going to go. Um, so we we all did have the chance to um, put this lesson under under the microscope as we all kind of tried to make our own final result. Um, you can see here I'm peeling off the tape of, of mine, but I'm going to go into a discussion here on on Shelley's um, artwork. And to start things off here, so this is Shelley's uh, unicorn crossing sign. So her reflection, so, and I quote, For this activity, I was thinking about the effect that people have on the environment. We should protect the animals. I know that unicorns are not real and just in stories. If we are not careful with the way we treat our animals and their habitats, they may become stories too. So her connection in this particular um, lesson is that, you know, we, we want to keep this open for um, kids to be creative while still kind of portraying the main message of what the sign is. So in this case with Shelly, you know, this is a place where you may come in contact with the unicorn and you should use caution because you don't want to run into it. So these type of signs are, are great because they not only keep us as drivers safe, but they also help keep the animals in the area safe too. If we're aware, then, you know, we'll have time to slow down if we see them, um, that kind of thing. So that way it just helps protect ourselves as well as the animals in the environment. Next up we have Claire's rendition of her final product. Um, so again I quote um, Claire's reflection here, I love how this activity could be adapted for a variety of topics and be integrated with different subjects in the classroom. So much creativity and exploration can be sparked through such a prominent everyday object like a street sign. And she's completely right. Like, there's so many options that we you can go with this. Like, you know, Claire has gone again with a very um, creative aspect, but I mean, it's, it's it's still the message is clear that you know we're we're driving. We need to yield because there's a possibility that dinosaurs are in the area, and that's something that we need to be aware of. So it's um, to the point. We understand what's happening, and um, that's everything a street sign needs to be. Finally, we have Jacob's uh, finished product. So he chose um, a little bit more of a symbolic sort of approach and his reflection, quote, um, after completing this activity, there are several aspects that I would have adjusted in preparation. I would have sooner the use of plastic stencils to make things go much smoother and reduce frustration of handmade paper stencils. Utilizing paint would have also been beneficial due to its ease of differentiation between stencil and art piece as well as the use of pencil crayons was quite difficult due to their inability to produce sharp outlines compared to that of traditional crayons or even paint. Having a variety of both sizes and shapes of stencils and properly securing them will be critical to the outcomes of this activity. So in doing this, we kind of realized some of the snags that might be difficult, especially at the grade two range. Um, so it's important to reiterate in the lesson that they, they carefully think about how it is they're going to portray um, they're symbol. So I mean if it gets too intricate or if you know they're using letters and they're really tiny and close together they're gonna have a hard time not only cutting it out um, but the the stencil process as well like if the if there's not enough space between the lettering uh, you know it's gonna be tougher to keep those little bits taped down and you will see some bleeding of the paint underneath and instead of you know crossing you could just end up with a, a smudge mark which will ultimately impact your finished result of what it is you're trying to to show on your sign. So in this case here um, Jacob took the environmental approach where you know he wants you to um, yield when you think about using too much water. And then finally we have my finished product here. Um, I went with the turtle crossing. I'm disappointed we don't have turtles here and I just I like seeing these signs, so this was my inspiration. Um, so for me, um, I love this activity because it could be adapted to so many different subject areas and age levels. It's a simple enough procedure, but it really requires the student to think about how they want their end product to look and what they want it to represent. They will need to really think critically about the order of their steps and complexity of their designs. For example, what symbol can I use that gets my message out right away? With street signs in particular, we drive by them really quickly um, so that we only really get a few seconds to process that information. So, you know, if there's too much going on um, and I have to think about it too much, you know, I'm already gone past the sign and I'm not really sure 
what it was was telling me where something you know you have your symbol maybe a short word in this case I understand that's a turtle it's crossing I need to be aware hope you enjoyed thanks for tuning in